Welcome to another episode of Big Ego Media. I've got two special guests today, none other than Skengdo and AM. How are you guys today, man? Good, man. My nice. God. Yeah. From the very get goes, like you, when I started doing this interview, people say, "Yeah, we chat to Skengdo and AM because I didn't have a name. You guys probably ignored my DMs. So I know <laughs> nah, them. I know, I know. I sent DMs in there. I know nah, I sent it's DMs not over that thing. <laughs> nah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. But um, like we all say, we all that to get to know people for who they are and just not their names. So we'll start with you, Skeng. I mean, uh, where are you from? Country? Where was you born, raised, and so on? Well, my background is Jamaica and Barbados. Obviously, I'm from the UK. Um, yeah, 24, from Brixton, South London. Yeah. Born and raised in Brixton. Born and raised. And, you, and yourself, AM? Yeah, same. Born and raised in Brixton, flipping 24, um, African. Those vibes. So, yeah. Anywhere in Africa in particular? Um, East East Africa, West Africa, and Brixton. I don't want to say the country. <laughs> 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 no, it is the French. The French kind of, mm. you know what I mean? It, it keeps people guessing. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I hear that, I hear that. Yeah. I mean, growing up, what was your early interest? What did you want to be? Bro, I'll be real. I didn't even know, you know. No. Like, I mean, I had an interest in sports, but that's like very young people growing up in the ends and that you want to do sports or something like that. So, yeah, I was kind of like, I wasn't really interested in football that much. I was more like um, into athletics. Okay, okay. So, pretty fast? Yeah, not anymore though. Right. <laughs> a bit slow, but yeah, like back then, mm. yeah, I was kind of cutting. It might be a bit slow because I see that you tried to run from there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they the, caught you. Yeah. <laughs> I got caught like a waste, man. But yeah, man. You know how it gets. And yourself, what was your early interest? I don't know, you know, like, I used to like um, films and stuff. Mm. I used to admire films. So I wanted to be an actor yeah. like, from, from a young age. Like, I probably wanted to do the acting thing. Um, but there was a, a couple of things come here and there, but that's the one thing I do remember like, as a youth. Mm. Thinking that, yeah, I want to be on TV and all of these things. So, yeah. mm. So in regards to the household, how was your household growing up in terms of parents? Was it a two household parents as a mum and dad or was it a single parent household? How was it for you? For me, it was um, mum and dad. Yeah. I've lived, I've lived with them. Never, They've never been um, separated. Yeah. So yeah, I've grown up with both of them. And how important is it? Because like, like I said, I do a lot of interviews, I always ask that question because to see how, diff how diverse people's upbringings are. I mean, how important was it to have a father figure in the household because you see it a lot of time people say oh my dad wasn't there that's the reason why I went astray or mm. so on I mean to have him there was he strict with you how was it he definitely taught, like tried to teach me discipline like do you know what I mean like it's not like see how bare people think just because you got your dad there the certain things that like I'm my own person so I do my own thing but he always tried to show me right from wrong mm. to try to raise me to be a man do you know what I mean like not no joke man out here do you know what I mean so yeah, I feel like having a father figure in my life was very important because there's certain things, certain decisions I could have made that I didn't because they was that that was like nah, mm. clamped it like nah. You, he's got to be a bit more strict on certain things. But if he wasn't there, thinking back on it, I, I, don't, I probably would have went left a long time ago and done mm. some mad shit and ended up just collapsing everything. Mm. And yourself, my mind's a bit different. Um... I, my mum and my nan live close to each other, okay. like five minutes away, so I spent most of my childhood at my nan's. And then my nan's was like more, it was a bigger family. Yeah. So I was like four boys, what my older sister, um, like some, sometimes my uncle's around, my auntie, my mum would come over certain times, and my nan, that's her gaff in it. Okay. So we kind of grew up like as a group, mm. but personally, I didn't feel that. Um, the father figure thing was missing. I didn't get to feel it. It yeah. never hit me hard because yeah, so much family support. Yeah, we had family. We didn't even care about that. So yeah. I like, call my pups whatever. So we didn't care about that. But obviously, growing up, you do realize certain things. Um, as much as the women raised us well and raised us the best they could, there's certain lessons that they can't teach us. Mm -hmm. We had to find that out um, ourselves. In like me and my and the rest of my siblings and cousins and whatnot that I grew up with. There's a lot of things that we have to find out ourselves, yeah. and that's how we made um, certain mistakes. And how how was you guys in school academically? Is it top set, middle set? Struggled a little bit. Um, let me think. But I was alright, you know. Mm. I wasn't in the bottom sets. I was 
I don't think I was in the top sets either. Mm. I was in the middle. Average like, right Yeah, now. like, I was just... I wasn't even bad in school. Like, I never used to get into fights, stuff like that. I was just always distracting others or being distracted. That yeah. was always, you know, parents evening, that's always the mm. report that's coming back. Yeah. He's, he does his work, but then he distracts others or he doesn't do his work because he's being distracted. Mm. But yeah, that, that's how I was in school. It was, I was all right. Mm. You saw? I was, I was flying still. Yeah. I was flying. Academically toxic. toxic. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, 7 to 11. Mm. But obviously I used to chill with a man mm. in, the, in the playground, whatever. Then in, in class, I'm just cutting through my work. But that's because I just found there's a connect with me and just learn. The way I learn, my learning style, is I've got a specific way that I learn. Yeah. So once I look at the book and da 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 da, mm. I understand it. So even when I went to college and that. So when, uh, even the other day, I bucked one of my brethren um, from college. I ain't seen him since years. Like, I ain't seen him in years. He's like, bro, I never got how you were so clever and da 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 doing all these subjects. Then he was with a man and boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, it's, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Yeah. And still, do your books and boom, 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 and then do what you have to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, no, that so. makes sense, that makes sense. So, how did you guys come to know each other in the first place? <laughs> we just live from the you same end. You know your presence here, yeah, <laughs> but you don't remember how you met. Yeah. I can't tell you. I just there, there's you know. no actual, mm. like, every, every interview we've ever had, can't give a story for that, bro, can't we? Just being around each other, yeah, just bro. from ends here. Yeah. Yeah. Just well, growing see, up together. Where, where, where Skin was living is, the same estate as my nan. Okay. So when my mum lived five minutes down the road, I was rarely at my mum's. Okay. Because my primary school was in the same estate. So I was just always at my nan's, but I'm back and forth regardless. So mm. everyone on the estate grew up together. Yeah. I can't remember the first day playing out and we can't remember the last day playing out. Because mm. there, was, there was a last day when yeah, after that day, nobody played out. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know when that was. We just know that. But you guys remember playing with each other those days as well, yeah. from young age, yeah. Yeah. Skeng had a dog. That's what it was. <laughs> and Skeng means his dog out. It's long. Wow. <laughs> now I was never into dogs. So, when would you say, uh, let's get to music first quickly. What music would you guys listen to? Like I'm talking about like primary school to year seven. So year six to year seven, what was the sort of sound of music you guys were into at that point? Year six, year seven. Boy, year six. Just whatever was on the TV. Mm. No, what was it? What was it? Channel U back then. Mm. Yeah. Channel U, like whatever was on there, like I would just be, I don't know. And then I feel like it's you're obviously you're in primary school. So when you get to secondary school, it's like you're starting to meet different people, people other people from different areas. They yeah. start showing you different things. So from then, year seven, it was the um, Peckham and Brixton. Yeah. Like, you've got gigs, obviously, Sneakball, the Gas Gang days yeah. and that, that sort of era. And then Chief Keith mm. came in. Like, we just... I, I don't even remember who even played Chief Keith. When the first time I heard it, I just know I was in, like, year seven. And I heard it, I was just like, rah, this is kind of crazy. Like, <coughs> I didn't really understand what you're saying at first. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then, as you listen to it more, you start mm. getting it. I mean, I was in jail when Chief Keith came out. And I remember everyone telling me, oh, there's this new 16 or 17 year old in Chicago. He's a madman. He's Chief Keith. And I heard it. I'm like, what's this? But I didn't know the influence he was kind of having. I mean, was you into Chief Keith at the time as well? Yeah, so um, from early, it's the same, the same. I just used to listen to um, with D-Block, American, American rap, yeah. mm. and the UK rap. And we was taking in because it was around us. Mm. So we go to the behind the house where the hills are. All the man them are out there shooting a video. We're like, oh shit! Da, 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 da. So we're taking in the UK rap as well. Yeah. From back from Quayron, and then um, as we get into school and boom, boom, boom. And the Jordan came. The Jordan came in, but yeah, it was just like it was a wave. Like it was a shock to see all guns and that on on <laughs> yeah, on, on YouTube. Yeah. Like to that extent. So we're literally just looking into a world and we're like. No, that's mad. Would you, yeah. would you guys scared of like, because when you're young, you're kind of still innocent, then you think, oh my God, look, he's got a gun. Or is it like, oh, he's got a gun, let's go and see more. Is it, what, 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 were you guys excited about that lifestyle at the time? I think, I think so. Not what it was, yeah. We got exposed to all of that, like, involuntarily. Like, we, mm. we didn't, we didn't want to see, like, we didn't necessarily ask to see nothing. Yeah. Mm. You're talking about, you step out of your house, everyone's there, mm. everything's going in. We're linking up as bridgings that play outside together. And then we roll on, boom, 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 rolling a couple older men and the, everything's going in. And we're just, <laughs> sir, it's my man's older brother. So we're good there, we're chilling. Mm. And boom, boom, boom's going on. They have a fallout, something mad happens. But this is from young. So 
um, to an extent, they were, I thought I had that, that excitement to an extent in the yeah. car. It's like, um, it's the stuff you see on movies. But Karma Primary School was in their state. It wasn't new to no one. So you got, so you, you literally got no escape. Like, you know, yeah. everything's happening right there, basically. Yeah. So um, you said something there, like watching the whole Peckham and sort of the gas gang time. And that was like, what, 2000, I guess, 8, 9, 10. When you were seeing that, did that gas you up a little bit? If you I want to be part of I'll gas be gang. Wrong. No, it didn't make me want to be part of nothing. Mm. That it didn't want me. I didn't feel like oh yeah, I want to be part of this. But therefore, you the music used to gas me mm. like because it was rapid responses. Like there will be someone form like saying our oh, gas gang might make a diss track to yeah. one of the Peckham Mutes and then the Peckham Mutes well, next day we'll have the song video shot ready like yeah. I'm saying yeah this is work rate but at them times I might not think about work rate mm. I'm just like raw it's really cracking mm. that is it was it was exciting because you remember I went to I went Kings though okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just like Peckham Gypsy Hill and a couple of Brixton mm. guys but mostly I would say dominantly Peckham yeah and when I was went to that school, there was bare pecking people in my year. Mm. So, and that was the only Britson one with yeah. no, actually, maybe someone else as yeah. well. And two men against all these pecking guys, mm. and they're coming to school like, yeah, this person, tiny, this person, young, mm. this person. <laughs> and I'm going back to Ricky. Do you know what I mean? It was mm. like that, but it's because when neither of us are involved, like mm. we're going to school, yeah. we don't actually care about that stuff. But it's just entertaining. But yeah. when we go back to school, like, hey, I'm gonna. Say to my man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's how it kind of started off for me. That like I was, it used to excite me like that. So, at which point would you say f- for you, you kind of really didn't touch raw? Because like you said that it's always been there, people around. At which point was it like, okay, I'm kind of involved in this lifestyle now? Let me give you a little something. In it. As a youth man, yeah, man was, did not want to join no gang. Because as a youth man, my sister was telling me, SMS out there in, in, in Maxwell Park. If you go to Maxwell Park and you buck SMS, it's long. Mm. Da, 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 da. All of this. So as a youth man, we used to hear bare stories. Then I remember summertime was recruitment for us that recruitment. <laughs> and it wasn't a nice sack, bro. Yeah. When you see guys actually getting recruited and they have to prove that they can be part of the man them. Mm. Guys is getting mashed up. Guys is getting put on work. And as a youth, I'm like 10, 11. I'm like, I'll oh, be real. This is a bit mad. Like, so obviously the biggest, the biggest, um, like gang members we knew was the man we didn't mm. even we knew the man had ops but if we see the ops come around ops ain't even looking at us mm. so whoever seen the man them said oh you just don't want it to be that summer and you get drafted like come here <laughs> you know what i mean so <laughs> that's, like, that's why i feel yeah. like this thing's different nowadays yeah. and nowadays i reckon you can just be from an area you and your you and your brethren just put on a belly and stuff and then boom 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 you get accepted into the into the life like that but mm. i feel like as when i was younger it was completely different. Like, mm. even, yeah, it's blood in, blood out. Yeah. One guy tried to leave, he got his thing handled, his, his parents shipped into Nigeria. Yeah. The man them handled him, yeah. You know, so, I mean, you saying that comes as a surprise to me, mm. right? And that shows me how much maybe my life has changed since then, or, because back in the day, you could join a gang and leave a gang, say, hey, I'm not involved no more. But you're saying literally it was blood in, blood out. Like, if you're trying to leave, like, man, I'm on to you. Can't, you yeah. Leave him, so. yeah. There was a point where, he needed a passport to walk through fields. Okay. The bear man didn't even know, bro, <laughs> there's the man's running to my nan, like, because we just think everything applies to tell us now, you know what I mean? Me and the, we run to my nan, like, we need our passports. It's like, why change your passport? Like, mm. What are we talking about? The oldest said, da, 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 you know what I mean? The, 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 there, was that, there was that passport time <laughs> that that people know about that. So, um, yeah, it just wasn't enticing as a youth yeah. to be like, yeah, this is what I want for my life. Mm. But as you, when you're asking, Ra, when do you feel like you got involved? There's no day again. It's like the same youths that guys are calling the four ten youths or the field youths or da 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 da. It's the same youths I was playing out with from yeah, five weather. six years old. Mm. So mm. it's like it's. I reckon the it's everyone else that just labelled it that okay. said that's what's up. You know what I mean? But I don't know, man. Because I'm when I'm deep in it, we used to go. Obviously, a lot of things started from Gang West. Yeah, <laughs> everything started Gang West. You Chuck go Adiro. High Park, Chuck Adiro, Hyde Park, and obviously you go in a batch. Mm. So when your batch has problems, you're getting yeah. problems with <laughs> guys you've never seen ever, but your batch has to stand strong, you know what I mean? Yeah. So eventually, and then your guy in what, back then team first, yeah. you know, bubbling, bubbling, scaring. Oh, what's big, the other one? Fish. Yeah, bigger fish. So you're going to all these things, mm. 
I can't look constantly going, guys know they recognise you now, that batch. Okay. From, yeah, where are they from? Brixton, yeah, that yeah. batch. You know what I mean? So you just get identified with certain people that they get like we said, we grew up with all these people that people will say like, oh yeah, you lot are like, gang, da 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 da. Yeah. We grew up with them, so we don't really see it like that. Do you know what I mean? And it's funny you guys are saying this because it's exactly the same thing. And I'm not, I'm pretty sure the 16 and 15 year olds probably the same thing happened with them now. Because I remember us guy Chocadero mm. and our race back in the day was Ben and Jerry Rays mm. or East Link. These were the under 18 Rays that we used to go to. So it's funny how nothing much is kind of changing. Mm -hmm. I mean. Looking at it now, right? Obviously, the olders are the olders, and I guess it's a rite of passage, we can say. But do you look back at the olders and think, well, you man could have shown me something different if you really wanted to? Um, yeah, I do feel like that, if I'm being honest. But I don't blame no one. Mm. You get it? Like, I don't... You see, anything that I do, of, of I make of my life, I don't put the blame on nobody. Like, that, they're not my dad, do you mm. know what I mean? That's, they're, not, they're, not, they're just my brethren, do you yeah. know what I mean? So they don't have to be... Feeling like they're like, oh, it's all on them to be like, oh, you need to be doing this. Because I did have orders that sometimes used to be like to me when I was like bunking school or college or whatever. They'll be like to me like, oh, get your education, bro. Like, what are you doing? You're just doing nothing out here. Do you get it? And those are little things that push me to go actually do it. So I already feel like, yeah, they could have done a bit more. But this is the streets, bro. Like, they're in it just like me. Do you know what I mean? It... it I don't feel it would be fair for me to say, yeah, they should have shown me something different yeah. when their orders didn't show them nothing different. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Idea. I, I, I remember an experience here. Yeah. I must have been 13. I just started Army Cadets. Gas become my bedroom's telling me there's bad things there. Mm. <laughs> I remember walking through the fields now, me and my bedroom, and obviously my bedroom's older brother and whatnot is all members at this time, innit? Yeah. So a couple of his older brother's bedrooms have seen us. And they're like, oh, your yeah, man's brother, yeah, boom, boom. Oh, I like what you lot are doing, so you're doing this cadet thing, boom. Make sure you stick at it, bro. The roads is dead, dead, dead. The youth next team is like, brother, they don't want to hear all of that. This is like, no, at the end of the day, they're going to do what they, what they want to do. And I'm mm. showing you in a couple of years, boom. But I'm there, look at my thinking, I just want Gial, you know what I mean? You know what I'm it's saying? Like, I'm <laughs> it stuck with me because I'm thinking, he, in his head, he's thinking, nah, man, in a couple of years, trust me. Then when I deep it now and I'm looking at a certain man, when I go through the ends, I look at a certain young youngies and I can say, yeah, you're doomed. Already, you're mm. doomed. You, you can be calm. You, you're finished. Like, mm. And these youths are still like te like 11, 12. Mm. You can see in their aura, in the way they behave. And that's, I think that's what kind of my man saw in, in us back then yeah. as well. He was, he was looking and it was, when my man that one youth was saying, bro, you man, stay on the good path and that. The mm. other youth's looking and he's like, nah, mm. nah, these man. Do you guys feel, I guess it's not your place, of course, they've got parents, but do you feel, as, as I said, with the olders, you didn't really feel you got... Do you now take any responsibility for the people growing up in your same estate and say like, I could chat to this kid right now yeah. that might change. Do you feel you have to do that or you say, no, it's actually none of my business and they'll, like you said, let them do what they're no, going to do. Well, I, don't, I don't feel like, I feel like we could, I could speak for both of us on this. We don't feel like we have to, but we know that the cycle has to change at some point, bro. Mm. Like if it's, we, me and AM are the first two from our block to actually like yeah man's bust off this music thing do you know what i mean like yeah people's seeing us do our thing millions of streams millions of views were out there features this that and the other the whole shebang so when the younger lot are seeing that on the block they know they know what's going on so mm. when they even see me and him they're like but they don't even want to take their eyes off us mm. we'll go to them yeah we'll sometimes we even kick ball with them yeah. like it's little things like that like you lot just stay out of trouble like do your thing though just stay out of trouble do you get it because when we was growing up, we didn't have that. We just had straight negativity. Yeah. Where's your... Do you get it? Mm. When the man them... Do you know what I mean? I can't even say the rest, mm. cause man, do you get it? But I don't want to heat no one up. But that's the reality of what man was living in. We didn't have orders that were saying to man, oh, yeah, do this, do There would be that one, two that might say to you on a low, like, mm. yeah, bro, just go, just go to your, your college or go... Do you get it? Mm. Go, go get your money up or something. Forget all of this riding out and all this other stuff, chilling on the block and that. There was not really many guys telling man that. <coughs> so when we're growing up now, we already know what it's going to lead to if no one does it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I feel like there's a time limit going what telling the young G pattern up. Word. There's definitely a time limit because when they reach a certain age where they have real life problems now. Mm -hmm. Maybe when they're 10, 11, they ain't got problems yet. Mm -hmm. When they reach 12, 13, 14, now, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Like, mm. I don't want to come and tell you, boom, 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 we're, we're all going through the same problems here. Like, 
the most I can do is cope, cool, like be like pattern up, like make sure you're diligent, make sure da 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 da. But guys are coming home, it's not that with their parents, whatever, boom, boom, boom. Certain parents are flinging their youth on the street and just boom, boom, boom. Guys just have real issues, like little kids yeah. have real connection issues and things like that, and they're leeching onto whoever showing them, yeah, you're my bro. Like, and I feel like that. If someone's at that stage, I have to tell you something different because no matter what I tell you, you're not going to listen to me. That's the thing, but it's always that I'm saying, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Because we, we, you can always be a hypocrite sometimes by telling the kid, go and do, even though you're not doing it, but at least you've told, told them, them. And it's up to them how they decide to navigate their life. Because my, the worst thing for me is always seeing someone that I've spoken to and then I've seen him on the news, either alive stuff mm. or dead. I think, raw. I actually spoke to the shoot as well, but mm. at the end of the day, it's their angle. But let's go to some more positive stuff like music. When did you guys decide, let's start writing bars? Did you do it together? Was it, was it just a man demo? Everyone doing ciphers on the block? How did it, how did it work? Um, there's a few like highlights that I remember. It was, I was rapping with someone else, mm. but I weren't taking it serious. I was just doing it like it is what it is. Um, Cause back then, you know, no one was thinking you could bust off music. Like you had to get Rock Nation had to look at you and yeah. for you to feel like you made it back then. Do you know what I mean? So it's like I was like, nah, it's just a little hobby. You know, I'm not really taking it serious. And then I didn't know Broski could spit. Mm. I didn't really know. But then one time I heard Donnie spitting about an apple, bro. I swear down, he's rapping about an apple, mm. and I was like. Right. What, live or you just heard it like on a... On no, well, back then there weren't no live. Mm. It was just, we were young. Like, we, I, no, no, I mean live in front of you. Oh, no, like no, no, yeah, live, live in front of me. Like, okay. we, I've gone you know, kicking ball, gone round to the cage, but broski, and then he's rapping about Apple. And I'm just like, bro, like... But well, he made it so hard, though. Yeah. So I was just like, no, nah, bro, you got to get in the booth. Like, can't we just go booth? Broski weren't really on it. Like, yeah. like, nah, man. I'm not on the music thing like that to get. But we, he still came, we done it. And I was like, yeah, we're doing the video. Most of you didn't want to do the video, done the video, <laughs> it got a certain amount of views. Yeah. Then we both kind of like, raw, like, I think, what was it, like 80k on Rap City? Yeah. 80k back then, like, raw. Yeah. What, I mean, what, I mean, Tree, what, what was it about Apple? Let me, let me, my, so from my point of view, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, my, obviously, school days and that, um, one of my closest friends, um, that, um, my role with Ziggy, he was on the music thing hard. Yeah. So it was always like when people are spitting in the playground, he's going and doing his thing. So I'm like, let me roll to you, you know what I mean? I'm mm. just spitting, I spit, what I do, I think of two hard lines, mm. hard. <laughs> and then I start freestyling. Then I slap the two hard lines at the end of freestyle. It was like, oh yeah. shit, I'm <laughs> cutting. So I used to get away with it, you get yeah. me? So time I come to the ends now, I'm just chilling. I just spit, I don't even remember the Apple story. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just it's probably, I was probably just spitting and just yeah. doing my thing, being dumb and whatnot. Just getting rolled up on my butt. From there, when from I from I remember Skeng, Ratty, a couple guys that surround me that was on man, bro, studio. And I had I had SoundCloud songs but on a joke thing, innit? Yeah. It used to be about girls and that. So they used to be like, come here, you need to shoot the vid, did it. And Skeng had videos out by then. Yeah. So obviously he's like, no, nah, you need to come booth. Skeng mm. coerced me into coming booth. I came booth. <laughs> then they coerced me into jumping on the song. I jumped on the song. Yeah. Bro. I remember one day walking through the ends, Skeng's at Raw, um, the cameraman's here. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, what, what is it? What's going on? He's the arting. I'm like, bro, I don't know. Yeah, 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 Why was yeah. you so against it? It just weren't me. Like, even mm. personally, even though when I said I was younger, I wanted to be an actor, as I grew up, I proper like, I like my space, I like my privacy, mm. like, like, I'm paro as hell. That's mm. why I stopped smoking, I'm paro as hell. So if I'm walking the street and people are looking at me, I'm, I want to activate because yeah. I know at least I'm safe. Mm. I've activated it's, if it's not a threat, my bad. You know, it's mm. funny you're saying this year, because literally, as you was coming at the car, I just see two kids walking in the with black jackets walking. <laughs> I'm saying, I hope you don't think that man <laughs> nah, said nah, nah. So yeah. I looked in their eyes, they were calm. Mm. But obviously, yeah, so obviously, I, just, I, I, I didn't want that, I didn't, but I was like, you know what, let's go. I'll be real. You see, the day the video came out, my heart was racing. Mm. <laughs> looking at it like this, it was me and, me and GD were in the house, I'm looking at it. I'm like, bro, what? It's, got, it's getting views, you know? I'm refreshing it. I'm like, bro, the views are going up, like, trying to go in the comments. Mm. I'm like, oh, man, I didn't even have a bad, yeah, I didn't have a bad bad. Yeah. Like, no, that's, that's what Skeng says. He's like, bro, you don't even show your face, bro. Yeah. Just cover your face. Mm. Man, these days, every day we had to wear our flags, innit? Yeah. So we had our, our bandana. I just slapped the bandana and slapped my hat and started rapping. And that was the Hammer song. Some yeah. people might not. It was the Hammer song. Mm. And from there, the next song kicked down doors. 
after that, think again. I think again. When and was it conscious that okay, would it be a duel now? Was it was that was that the thing? It wasn't, or... even, it wasn't even a plan duel. Yeah. I'll be real. <laughs> what plan? Them, half of the man them kept going jail, so we would all go studio together. Like six man go studio. We will lay a song. One man ain't finished his verse. We're like, you'll finish it later, he goes to jail. Mm. Cool. Yeah. We'll finish it later, he's not about for the shoot. So it was bare, but me and Skeng was the only consistent. consistent yeah. Just always. So we would have six songs, five incomplete, and one song complete, me and Skeng. Mm. And we're like, bro, we might as well just shoot our thing, car. We're ready. Like, boom, boom, and that's how, that's how it just became like that. Like, and, oh, I mean, you don't have to get into this, but what was it, the reason behind the name Skeng, though? Or is it obvious, kind it's, of? It's, 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 let me keep it real in it, car. See me, I don't like to do the capping thing, innit? Mm. Like, the man them just gave me that name, bro. <laughs> like, I'll be real, bro. The man them just gave me that name, yeah. bro. Like, I was known as Trolls before because of my Trolls. first name. Trolls, yeah. Because okay. of my first name. And then, yeah, like, the man them was just like, nah, like, tch. Skeng, though, like, I like that one mm. still. Like, I'm like, right, cool, say nothing. I hear it. But, even then, like, I still weren't running with it like at the start, bro. Yeah. I didn't really even like being called that. Like, mm. cause I always used to think, like, what is if I do blow now? Mm. That name is kind of rudded. Like, mm. I don't really... Do you know what I mean? So, obviously, people know me as Skendo now, but I don't even like being really called it. Like, yeah. When people are like, oh, yeah, Skendo, I'm like, nah, mm. let's call me S. I prefer that. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Than Skendo, because the name sounds a bit brazy. Mm. And then AM? AM. Uh, my thing is just the evolution of names, isn't it? Because mm. you know what like, Prior to that, it might have been, it was Ace, innit? Mm. Ace, Ace, or anyone from like college and prior would have been calling me Ace. And then obviously Ace always used to remix it. Ace Capone, Ace this, Ace mm. that. And obviously Mali from my last name, and like that's abbreviated as Mali, innit? Yeah. So I was just rolling with the with the, the Ace Mali, but it's an mm. AM, innit? So obviously everyone knows what AM was and boom, 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 you know what I mean? So it kind of, at the time, it, it made sense of what was going on in my life. You yeah. know what I mean? So it was just like rolling with it. So at this point then, you release his videos, it's getting numbers. Are you guys picking record deals? Are you picking, oh, let's start speaking to people? Or is it just like, you know, let's keep this doing as a hobby and we're getting attention because of course there'll be people now knowing you and that, that gives you a bit of hype and excitement as well. What was the angle at this point? Um, at that point, I don't think... There was a, when we started that, we didn't even, I don't even think we was even taking it serious then. We were yeah. just playing around yeah. and then we stopped for a bit. We actually had a little break, mm. like, was still going to studio on that. But back then, bro, you remember, man has to pay for booth. Mm. Even finding oh. studios are kind of hard and that, that, so man has to pay for booth, do other stuff that man, just street stuff that man's doing anyways. Mm. It, it got a bit long, do you know what I mean? And it was just one time, like, you know, everyone's now on your back, so they're like, Where, like where's the new music and that? Mm. And... I was just like, do you know what? I had a cool bro. I was just like, do you know what? It was, it was like, when was it? In like December, because we released Crash in January. So I remember we had a conversation like, bro, see the next song we release, like, well, there's no stopping after had, that. This, that was 2017, the beginning of 2017 when we had yeah. that conversation. When I say, for maybe like, prior to that, like three, four years prior to that, it was pepper. Mm. Like, the streets was pepper, back mm. and forth shit going on yeah. in every area. So it was pepper. So in terms of us releasing Hammers and then releasing two more songs, we're into 2016 now. It's t it's publicity. Like obviously shit was going in and people didn't know. Now that it's publicized, it's hot. The feds are involved, it's yeah. heavy, but the street shit don't die. So I, we're going through a literal, literally a whole year of just trying to go studio, your chat, bro, trying to go college, you get a phone call. We're back in London, like, because I went SFX in, in Ballam. Yeah. Situation happened, I had to go to college in West now. Mm. I'm talking about we're in West, phone call back in the end, back to yeah. Western. When we're, we're in studio, phone call back to the ends, you know what I mean? So it was hard. It's like, how do we, how do you do music? You mm. know what I mean? And then by then, the fans were a bit annoyed because the consistency wasn't there. And, and BT and Rendell, they were doing their thing at the time. You know what I mean? So they were going shows, were going shows, and people were asking for us as well. Like, what, you lot ain't releasing? Da, 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 da. So when it came to 2017, I were like, BT and Rendell are doing well. A couple of them, and the Angel Town lot are, are doing well. Like, we might as well just give it a shot. And obviously, mm. Skeng, Skeng, like, from then till now, has been the driving force yeah. of this music team. Because me, at any given time, I was like, you know what, that's calm, that's mm. whatever. But Skeng's like, nah, nah, we're 
this and video this, we're shooting, we're doing this, that, because I reckon that's his actual passion. Like. Yeah. Mm. And because, just with, like, with, with, with the street stuff, right? Because, like we said, we live in a world where these things are going to happen, right? Mm. And we see things going on around us where certain man's dead, certain man goes to jail. Do you guys ever come to a point in life where it's like, you know what? I actually need to just move off ends. Don't even come check ends once in a blue moon and live a happily safe life knowing that, yeah, people don't like me, but I don't have to be around these people because being here can actually attract someone to come after me. You know what I'm saying? It's mad hard. It's so hard, like, just even to get into that mentality. Like, I hear it all the time and from family... And even from, I might be chatting to one bird here and there and she knows like, yo, like, why are you still in the ends, bro? It's hard. Like, it's like the same way I couldn't do that to Skeng. I couldn't just be like, you know what? I hear that you're getting into bear madnesses and that, but you're making me hot. Like, you know what? I'm, I might have to do my thing here. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you genuinely got love for the people you've grown with and that's shown you and you've been in mad situations with. So, but it's, it's like... It's a mad, boy. It's a mad, it's a mad decision to make. And you but have to calm, people that. respect the fact that, okay, we grew up together, yeah. right? We've done a lot of things together. Mm. But where I must go, not everyone can go. Mm. Because as much as there is loyalty, people will always be my friends and so on. But you live this life alone and you'll die alone, right? Mm. And people have to look at it. If it's me, I'm happy for my friends. Like, you know what? You, man, don't get involved in this normal. You, man, got a career. You, man, go off and do it. So... That sense of loyalty mm. can be the thing that kind of can jeopardise you because we see it happen we, where people are killed in their own hood all the time. We see it happen. So do you guys ever think, you know what, yeah, I'm loyal to the man, but the man they must also now kind of respect and realise, no, we're not kids anymore. Because I don't know if you guys got children or anything, but it gets to a point where you have children. Like me right now, if they say to me, the world is ending, mm. right? I'm gonna put this, on, this, this is how I'll put it to you guys. They're telling you the world is ending right now, right? God is coming at midnight. You've got five, the, the last 12 hours. Who are you spending those last 12, 12 hours with? <laughs> Who are you picking? Are you going to pick the man them? Nah. <laughs> what? I'm picking the family. 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 I'm saying? It's going to be, so that's how I always put it to people. It's like, okay, cool. The man them and the man them. But if it, serious things really happen now that you know what I need to actually better my life and, and this is my last point of living am I really going to chill the man them or I'm going to be with my loved ones and family so I always say the man them needs to respect people mm. having that transition but of course who am I to say anything because I'm not deep in the trenches where you guys are but that's just my little bit of advice well, to say see me personally I'm not even speaking for skim I well, when I do my self evaluation like, I've got a problem in it like, my problem is I think um, within myself I'm too humble like mm. to, I don't look at myself as a rapper. I, I actually don't look at myself as a rapper. The first time I even started acknowledging it is when we're out of town, we're shopping in Brum and people are coming up to us and, they're, and the way they're looking at me is the way when I was a youth man, I used to look at a certain man, like, right, mm. he's doing this. Too. So like, cause, cause I'm like, when I come to the ends, I'm so grounded. It's like, my brain just treat me like, like me, you know, mm. like, so, where, where it's on that level, I don't see it as, rah, I'm an asset, or like certain amount of asset, let's protect our asset. I don't mm. see that, I'm like, nah, fuck it, we're all together, you know mm. what I mean? And I feel like that's a personal problem in myself because mm. I, I recommend, I, I definitely feel like I do, I'm, I'm a bit clouded in it. Like, mm. I'm just like, you know what, like, if the music goes and everything else, this is what I know, this is what I've always known, you know what I mean? And and I've seen other people and other people elevate from from their their situations and go on to do other things and and I don't I don't I don't even judge them I don't say right well, what you done was wrong you know what I mean but the way I feel within myself it's a it's a thing that I constantly go through within mm. myself and I'm like is this the right decision or whatever boom 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 like even down to safety I'm like bro cool I'm not cutting now I'm safe I can't even put my brothers in a position to cut and be safe as well mm. so why am I really that's, it's just a personal thing that I go for, but I, I definitely hear what you're saying when it comes to that. what matters, mm. like, and at the end of the day, like, who's there and who, who you're going to need, like. I've been, I've been on a hospital bed and I open my eyes and see my brothers, you know mm. what I mean? So, it's, I reckon it's all just personal experience and how yeah. you are and what's important to you. And I don't feel like it's wrong or right, whatever someone chooses to do with their life. Yeah. 
No, that makes sense. So, just back to the music then. So, it gets to the point where you guys, you're buzzing, the streets are hot, you're making music, and then you get to the attention of the police who are now saying that, rah, nah, you man are inciting violence. I'll ask you two things. Does dual music entice violence? Because I say this, rappers always entice things, whatever, right? Like you can say from hip-hop days, grime days, whatever. But we're actually sort of calling out people's names in that, in that sense. Not, dual, not, not just the beat, not just the actual beat that dual is, but in terms of lyrics, would you say that entices violence? Um, I mean, I feel like it depends, bro. Yeah. It really depends on how the person articulates himself in the rap, in the bars or whatever. Because some people just like... Um, blatant with it, like very direct, mm. a bit horrid with it. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, your bed just dead, all of that stuff, like, is a bit mad. And mm. then talking about how it may have happened and stuff like that is a bit mad. But I don't, I feel like there's other ways, bro. Like, it's people's freedom of speech, bro. That's the reality, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't, if I was seeing flowers and stuff and all that stuff, when I look out from where I'm looking out from in the morning, that's what I'll be rapping about. Do you know what I mean? But most of the stuff that we, I, I can't talk for everyone else, innit? I'm just talking for myself. Yeah. Like when I speak, I don't feel like I'm trying to incite any yeah. violence intentionally. Like it may come across that way, do you know what I mean? But I'm not doing it like, oh yeah, go and do this, go do that, do this, do that. No, that I'm just saying my story and stuff that I may have experienced, people around me may experience, stuff that I may have seen, do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. But I don't feel like I'm trying to incite anything. Like any violence. But you said something interesting there, and I'll bring it back to AM. You said you look outside, you don't see flowers. If you saw flowers, you were spit about flowers. AM, you said you started rapping, you were talking about girls. Yeah, so yeah. what was the transition there that made you feel that, nah, the girl thing ain't working, it's not, it's, it's not the way, this is um, the way forward? Okay, so talking about, when I was buzzing back then, that's, that was my reality though, I'd be real, innit? It like, was girls, was girls, bro. Yeah, sugar. bro. It was girls, yeah, bro. Yeah, girls, bro. were getting lit. You know, there's a party on... No, that was a yeah. hell of a yeah. person. There's a party on, you get me? So, um, but then, as a reality... And and this is the thing about... about um, um, this One thing I hate, yeah, is when people refer to the man named Ms. B forever as post-Cold Wars. Mm. Because I, I reckon it doesn't give justice to the real reason why things are going on. And it, and it paints it with a stupid brush. Yeah. Like, this is stupid because you're fighting over an area that you lot don't own. But really and truly, <laughs> cool. Post codes is just, back then, it's how people identified their set. This is where we're from. Yeah. This is what we represent. This is my set. But the real reason why the beef was going in, the beef started somehow. Somebody got finessed. Somebody's girl got beat and they wanted to get revenge. So, however it started, but mm. eventually people lost <coughs> And that's when I can say any situation I've had turn real. Mm. If I've lost a bridging or someone's lost a bridging. Now we ain't fighting because oh, I'm from here and you're from there. My bridging's gone and someone else needs to feel the brunt of that. Mm. So now our ends got beef. So when I say we've come up in the area that we're in, they've got prehistoric beef and every area got their, 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 you, you um, adopt beef that you've had nothing to do with the, mm. the beginning of it. And we had that growing up, you know what I mean? But where things changed is when we had our own beef, we had yeah. our own friends, we fell out with our own friends and things started happening between us. And this is our situation. We're the front of it, we're the head of it. This is our problem now. And that's where things started to turn a bit real because it's like, yeah, we had beef and you might see the other, the done, but you know our ends don't get along and you might get a blag because you, um, you was one up and they was one up. And mm. now with this, when it's something that you've been the front of, it can't happen like that because mm. you feel the emotion of everything. Yeah. I feel like that's where it differentiates. So whoever was rapping about gal and this, 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 when we had our own problems, that was the problem <coughs> of our friendships and whatnot, it became real now because yeah. this is our life now. Like, mm. What can we do? You, you, um, the net, the media, everyone could call us gang members. We're just a group of guys that fell out with another group of guys and boom, boom, boom. And this is what's going on with us. Yeah. What, what Sken was saying about... Um, um, was it the origin? What was, what, what was you last talking about? Um, uh, I remember from talking about the 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 the, 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 the ends. It's gonna come to me anyway. Yeah. But um, what 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 point was Skeng just saying before you passed on to me? I was talking about um how I don't personally feel like in our raps. Oh we yeah, choose the to, thing, yeah. yeah, that's it. 
what I would have said is, um, from young, even when even when we had problems with other guys, if we're gonna mention, if we're gonna diss each other, we was gonna diss each other anyway. Yeah. And you, if 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 um real rap was the thing popping, we would have dissed you in a real rap. If it was grime. If it was if it was grime, if it was R and B, we would have dissed you. <laughs> we R&B. say R and B this is. Whatever was popping, singing and that. Yeah, so, man. Skype, well, we used to be on Skype chatting, chatting, mm. like group <laughs> Skype calls, and mm. everyone's just getting at each other. Even if there was no such thing as music, Insta Live, they have a way. way and we'll be dissing each other. Mm. That's, our, that's our problem that we have between each other. Mm. That's how we're putting it out. So, me, my set and your set, we're always going to have problems, we're always going to buck each other, we're always going to diss each other. So, whether, whether that music, when now that's related music and it's put across the across the world, everyone's looking at that. Now that's going to raise crime because they're saying this. You, you, you've made a very valid point there is that you're going to diss each other regardless, no matter what is on the internet, on Instagram Live. So, basically, if Instagram Live was music, that would be the, the case. Mm. Respect to, so, you can't really say Drew is the thing that's enticing it because it's personal issues yeah. that's enticing it. I hear that point. So, when then the police have now said, yeah, you guys are injunction, you can't perform certain songs. I mean, how did that make you feel? <laughs> bro, I didn't... Because it brought you also a little bit of fame as well. Like, people are like, oh, it's getting on no, national bro, news. Like, <laughs> no, bro, like, that's not... You see, that sort of... Ah, right, cool. That sort of attention. You don't want that attention, bro. Mm. Like, that's not a good look for our brand, you know what I mean? So it's not... It wasn't an exciting thing, like, oh, yeah, we got from the judge or whatever, or the injunction, that was dead, bro. So mm. when it happened, we, we just come from Red and Elise Festival, bro. We're thinking, yeah, this now is the beginning of our thing. Like, mm. yeah, we've worked this hard to get to a certain spot. We've got there. Now we're just going to keep going. Mm. And then what? Like a week, two weeks after that, bro. <laughs> injunction, like, oh, like what? God, like, it didn't even seem... Real, bro. Did you have to go to court? No, bro. They just they, told you. They, they, this is where they done the joke thing. They had a, what was it, hearing or whatever yeah. without us. Mm. They, they didn't tell us not, nothing. They've done all of that. And then, yeah, the people them just come to my house, my mum's bit, and they're like, raw. they're just giving me this envelope, this brown envelope. I'm thinking, oh, like, what's this? They're like, yeah, you've been served. I know that when I tell people that story, they think I'm lying. <laughs> no, they, no. When yeah, I tell, so yeah, right? bro. When I tell people the story, they think I'm making this up, bro. Mm. The, the Jets came to my door, like undies, the, the three white guys, not to my door. I'm thinking they're just gonna say something about I don't know. The, you know, sometimes they knock on when you live like in an estate, they might mm. come talk about the gas or something. Mm. I thought they were gonna say that. Open the door. They're talking about yeah, you've been served. Like, what <laughs> served? What they're like a gang injunction? Da, 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 da. If you read it, it will tell you everything. You're supposed to go court. I said yeah. I didn't even open it. Yeah. As soon as I heard gang injunction, court, this, that, music. I said I just need to call AM. I said bro, don't go to your house. <laughs> you're due to get served this injunction, bro. Mm. But it's well, too late. Say, yeah, we we bus we got out of bus in real life cases. Mm. Man's evading, winning, man's in court for mad things and coming up. There's no way on earth I'll be down if you're sending me jail for music, for when I'm actually <laughs> doing positive mm. things and trying to inspire people and, and trying to elevate and you want to send me jail mm. when you can't even get me for nothing else. Yeah. And this is why they were pissed because we're talking head of gang unit mm. who's behind all of this and coming to our court hearings and that for music. These dead pissed that he couldn't get us for nothing mm. else. You know what I mean? Which you can't call. We, no one's no idiot. I ain't no idiot. So and you're innocent. Innocent. Yeah. All right. So what I'm saying, this injunction was the most. It was the most. It's. It didn't seem real because mm. you, you can't tell me I'm banned from two postcodes. First of all, that cover seven bridges in London, <coughs> where we can't drag. We can't mm. even drag into them. So you're telling me I can't cross seven bridges from about. Um, um, from Victor, no, uh, Vauxhall, Vauxhall, Vauxhall all, all the way, Bridge. yeah. Mm. You can't cross none of those. No ULEs, all that congestion charge bit there. <laughs> so they gave you your own personal ULEs. Wow. Man's <laughs> own ULEs, circled out on the map. That's just one. Mm. The, the booklet was like this thick. Yeah. <laughs> the, the second booklet they gave us listed nearly every song we got and every lyric and the meaning under, like, you know when you go on Genius and yeah. you click it and it has the meaning, mm. the meaning of what they think it means there. 
they went ham. So was that every single song you guys had basically? No, every, more or yeah, less. song because they were trying to get all the songs taken off of YouTube. Yeah. So they were showing the judge and the court why this song should be taken down. And when YouTube are taking off all your songs and you guys, like, obviously you'll be pissed. Like, but what's going on? We yeah. built up our career, our platform, our numbers are doing well. I, I mean, and how was you to feeling? To be fair, not many of our videos got taken down. There was only like two. Mm. And then some of them skills, our manager, um, he just took initiative and was like, nah, he's going to shout the channels to um, put them on private. Yeah. So they, they they can't actually see it. That's so they think it's down. Man about bars, 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 bars was on was on private for, for a, a, a good few months. Yeah. A nah, good. Some 30 mil, but that we had to say, that's my baby. Yeah, we <laughs> couldn't let that one go. <laughs> no, 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 no. We had to protect that one at all costs. Even the attempted 2.0, we managed to save. We saved, we saved a couple, but attempted yeah. got stripped off the net. I think it just hit two mil. With so, that, is it gone forever? No, gone. 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 No, 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 even the videographer ain't going no more. No. no. That's why I rate this videographer. He was telling me, his whole profile said, Bobby, don't delete everything. I'm going to keep everything on a file. So that like, these interviews that ever take it down one day, we've got it somewhere yeah. too. Because we also were like, the rules, like the, the scapegoats for this thing. So mm. was, when our team was getting taken, no one knew what to do. It's like, oh shit, videos are getting taken down. Yeah. Like, so we're talking about big numbers getting taken down because I said the crash get taken. No, nah, crash didn't get taken. No, nah. think again think got, again taken, got down. taken down. Uh, hammers kick down doors. No, but hammers was that. <laughs> that was did kick down doors get taken down? No, I don't think nah. it did. There was a Tented. few. Mm-hmm. Money and grease. So, so I mean, at this point, then I see you guys said fuck this, and you guys still performed one of your songs, right? Yeah, <laughs> it was it wasn't clear initial, enough. Yeah. The initial injunction, yeah. I wasn't allowed to be in contact, in yeah. directly or indirectly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got a joint business account. Yeah. I can't contact. I can't call Ratty and be like, "Yo, let me check this again." Mm. Yeah. We would have. That would have been a breach. Wow. And we could do up to two years in jail for breaching the injunction. That's I'm like, right. does this make sense, bro? So did you guys get lawyers involved at the time? Yeah, yeah. 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 Straight away, we shouted the lawyers, and like, they were shocked. Even like they didn't expect us to have that type of legal representation. Yeah. And even that, we could only chop down the the, the injunction to a little bit. And uh, we couldn't actually contest the whole thing yeah. because what it is, it's a civil matter mm. where they put criminal elements in it. Okay, like you can't walk with a bladed arc. Now, how are you going to say I want to I want to contest this whole thing because you can't do that anyway? It's a crime. Yeah. So you can't contest the whole thing. They've done it cleverly. Okay. So I mean, what made you guys say we're still going to perform the song? We the sold energy, the bro. The energy rose up yeah. tours. They sold out tour. Yeah. People like there's probably a couple artists now that sold out their tour in our genre, but back then we was the first. Yeah, yeah. Nobody Two did that. Tours, one year, yeah. 2018. Do you know what I mean? So to do that, it was like, uh cool. And it's a home time was home yeah. um hometown as well. Mm. We're in London, Coco, Coco sold out. I said nah, and what the, the the initial plan was just to play literally the intro, mm. get them gassing and start. I think it was mad about bars, yeah. but we were just like. Once you saw the reaction, yeah, and then <laughs> we've stopped it, and they're still saying attempted, should have, all of that, yeah. yeah? All right, cool. When that happened, it was like, nah, DJ, keep running it. <laughs> keep running it, keep running and it. And you thought, would you think feds were in there? <clears throat> nah, they saw it. Um, so how we ended up even getting the breach was Link Up TV done 24 hours with Skengdo oh, on AM. Okay, yeah. And that's a clip on there, bro. Mm. Like, and that's not, and that's not even... Link up TV's fault, bro. Mm. It's they didn't, they didn't know. Yeah, they didn't know. Mm. We didn't. We didn't even tell them, and we didn't even think we was gonna get in trouble for mm. that, bro. We're thinking we're performing our song. It's already a song that's out. Yeah. We, we we thought it was new songs mm. that mm. if we made a new song, we're not allowed to perform that new song that may be saying this or whatever. So when we performed a song that was already out, it was like, all right, cool, we're calm. And on top of that, it's not even my song. It's like, <laughs> so when they're saying, yeah, all right, cool. Mm. Attempted. This is the song. The reason why we're giving you the breach. I'm not a bad brother, innit? Mm. I can't be in court like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like. Wait, wait. wait. Now, I'm not on that song. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But I was just like in my head. I'm thinking, bro, I'm not even mm. on this song, bro. <laughs> but I just left it because I still performed it. Yeah. I was there. As you get, it, I take accountability as well. So the injunction's gone now, though, right? Yeah. Is it earlier this year? Yeah. yeah. Do you think that's played a part in sort of? not putting you at the spear of the higher heights where you should be. Because, like I said, I wasn't really known my drill music per se, but like when I was doing my 2018 charity match, he was like, yeah, get skinned on AM, get skinned on AM to come. And I think someone through your management actually had been in touch. So you guys were at the sort of higher heights of being, not necessarily big now, but bigger than what, what, what's happened now. Do you think that's fucked things up? 
I reckon it plays a part. I don't. I, I, ain't, I ain't even on a blaming game or nothing like that because I look at a career in itself as a journey. journey. You know what I mean? I I don't. I don't see it as a thing where you started you're flying and you're gonna fly for the rest of the thing. Mm. I reckon this character gets formed when when it has its highs and lows. Mm. So obviously, as that happened, it's still part of the story. But what what part it did play was imagine having to record a song, give it to our solicitor. He then has to run it through someone in the police force to approve it. Mm. Then it comes back to us. Then we can shoot and record. That is a laborious process. Mm. Tiring. Tiring. Long, I still bare got uncertainty. I have got to do that now. I've got to do that now. Because I'm on license. Okay. But with, 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 by the time it was both of us, and we're talking about we've just shut down our tour. It's everyone's buzzing. Mm. Like songs are popping. We've got like six bangers that we can perform nonstop around the country. Shows got shot from us. Red, um, what's it called? Um, ha- red, red. That cold thing when it goes from like red, green. Red, red. Yeah, we've got put on high alert when we've never had one incident on mm. our show, not one violent incident. Our tour was 14 plus. Like mm. if you're from the age of like 14 to 18 or 14 to 16, you had to come with a guardian. Yeah. Our shows had children in there and no violence happened. Then from there, it's like venues are just counting like no we can't have them duh, 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 duh. But i'm like what's going on here like mm. we're getting booked everywhere and just not allowed to perform that was two years straight no performance and are you, is, is, is things improved now in terms of performance? obviously you know covid kicked in last yeah, year yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so we had the <coughs> first festival this year mm. obviously skin was about for that so even that it's just like it's not been the same since so, so i mean how does that work when, when if he's not there you go to the festival do you feel alone on stage you still yeah, think you're still doing it's a minimum amount of times i perform about skin maybe like twice i say three times max yeah. and obviously i've got um the man with me and they're hyping it up as well so um it's all right in it but it's not the same thing it's never gonna be the same so i mean the two people that um obviously your managers I only kind of really got to know them this year, but I'm an aura person. Mm. I, I meet people and I can tell oh, this person got called aura. I tell you, like they're two genuine people that I really like SK and TK. Like honestly, you meet people and you think, yeah, these these are from a, a, a good a good place. Basically, how did you guys get to know them? How did they become your manager? Um, one of my brethren's um knows them. Well, I think he knows skills separately. Um, Bryson, he knows. Yeah, you know, skills um, separately. I don't know, maybe I think it might be through church or whatever, yeah. or their parents know each other. Um, but yeah, like we obviously we was coming up. You could see, for our brethren could see before me and AM that it was going to go, that the music was going to take off and we kind of needed someone to manage certain things because we had one of our other brethren, um, Big Up Loud, he was dealing with our emails and stuff like that. Um, but that's man's brethren. Like, yeah. He's got other things. He's trying to pattern as well. So... Yeah. He's like, he's, there's only so much he can do and he don't know nothing about no music and mm. all this stuff, like, neither do we. So, my brother was just like, yo, like, to get skills, you should meet him and just have a chat with him, you know what I'm saying? Just let, hear him out, like, because we was on this, nah. Mm. No managers, no... They had a hard time. They had a hard time with <laughs> us. They had a hard time. They was in the block, mm. in the block, with a laptop out. <laughs> yeah. About 15 Dude. members around them, mm. going through every article in their contract. Mm. It was funny, brother. <laughs> like, they had a hard time, but they had to get vouched. For, like they had someone had to vouch for them. Mm. That's how we ended up. Cause I was in Jamaica. I went to Jamaica. Yeah. I remember Skills was messaging me like, "Yeah, um, you're gonna sign the contract and stuff. Are you gonna do this?" And I'm just like, <laughs> "I'm airing him. I'm airing him. I'm airing him." <laughs> and I'm in Jamaica. I remember I was sitting at the table with my, my mom and my dad. My phone goes off. Skills mm. again. Like, I'm saying, bro, <laughs> this guy won't leave me alone. Mm. Like, I'm like, so I, I thought I'll chat to my mum and dad about mm. it, innit? So I spoke to them, and they were just like, bro, like. If it makes sense, then just see where it goes in it. But why I like skills and TKs because they, we ne- they never. Although there was applying pressure, I never felt pressured. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So they always like they were, they gave us the option like, right, right, cool, we'll give you a six months trial in it. Within any time within that six months, you can look can leave, do whatever you want to do. You don't have to stay. Yeah. We just want to show you what we have to offer. Mm. And within six months, bro, we was flying up to this city, that city, doing this. So it was, yeah, I, I totally agree with you when you say it's the aura, the energies, yeah. do you know what I mean? From, we didn't know them. So when we've actually got to meet them, we got an energy, but we still was very cautious of yeah. what's going on in that, do you know what I mean, car? Like we said, brought them to the ends, <laughs> had 50 men around them <laughs> with their laptop out and then <laughs> telling everyone, 
what our wait, contract wait, says because it's basically cool right? you, and then let's listen to them yeah bro. any fuck up was it was going to be on no, <laughs> you know other guys in the end trying to manage us as well. Okay. So they had to deal with them man as well. Mm. And them man there were the older lot, so yeah. it was a bit techy even in that aspect. But they're saying you're on a professional level and whatever, boom, boom, boom. Like, what I respected personally was the honesty that they came with. Yeah. They came with saying, Rock, we, you guys can do this for us. We're starting this thing. We've got this, this popping. This is what you guys can do for us. Mm. This is what we can do for you. What do you want in your career? What do you want in three months? Let's draft up a draft up a plan. Mm. So we draft up, we want uh, in about three months, six months, we want this, we want that. We want to have at least a headline show, we want this, 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 boom. Drafted up the contract together. And then boom, they let us go away, um, um, read it, whatever, boom, 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 said it, showed whoever we need to show. So by the time we even green lighted, it, it wasn't a straight away, it might have been like maybe a month or two months down mm. the line, but we had to, we got to know them, we went to their studio, used it a couple of times, and like that, the relationship came in it. But I, that's what I'd advise anyone that's even thinking about management and that do your due diligence, make sure you really rap with the people, make sure the contracts is right, make sure you get a good vibe, make sure this is your career and this is your life in it. So don't just take it lightly and be like, yeah, whatever, boom, boom. Like make sure you're confident in your decision. Either way it goes, you knew that, yeah, at the time, that's the correct decision I had coming. And regards to when when you guys finally got offered a record deal, was it something that you guys thought, wow, shit, we actually got a record deal? Uh, this, like, this is mad. I reckon we never even, oh, we ain't had a, we ain't had a, uh, we ain't been signed. We oh, we were signed, we okay. Signed. Like, we, we, we ain't been signed, but that's personal, personal preference. You, know? well, you decided to be do, yeah, uh, independent? Yeah, just independent with management. Okay. At like most, probably, um, um, just done, the, yeah, we've done, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, distribution, give it, tapes. sold tapes, uh, singles, stuff like that. Mm. But wow. not as are, yeah, we're artists of, for example, like Sony or something yeah. like that. Nah. Is that something that you guys will want to do? Or is it like, you know what, actually? Because I, I say this to say this, right? And someone that you guys know the other day, his interview should be coming out this weekend, actually, on ads. And he was on here and he sort of does everything on his own. He said, like, if a record label come, they have to come with some big P. Yeah. Because... He's created his own fan base and people can buy directly from him. So why does he kind of need a record? But I guess it's the fast, quick money they give you in advance sort of thing. So there's that temptation. But for you guys, had it, what's the thinking about signing the deal? Personally, I've always said stupid money. It has to be stupid. Like, where, where's, where's, it has to be an L in, like, in a sense, more so for the label than man. Mm. Like, then I can be like, ah, right, cool, you know what I mean? But prior to that, I'm only going to, like, let's say, a label thinks I'm worth an M, yeah? yeah? And in my head, I'm worth five M's. I'm not accepting an M. I'm working till that label can say, ah, right, cool, you know what, boom, boom. And then you have to give me a piece more. Like, you have to know your value. And I feel like the good thing about how long we've been in the industry is that we understand how it works now and we understand how to raise value and we understand how to what people want and what labels want. Yeah. And really in this thing, it's more so it's a loan. You know what I mean? So you need to know what you're giving up. What, am I loaning my whole thing? Am I going to give you a lot? this thing and then in, in 25 years I get it back like what you need to know what works for you and mm. you need to have a plan in place for that sh for them sheets because I got right now I never thought that I'd look at 100 bags that like, change mm. right now I know what what I can give you that's worth 100 bags and it's not what I would have thought that because mm. the first the first time I heard a single got sold for 60 bags my brain I almost I'm like I've seen guys almost die mm. for half of this piece like the guys are robbing, robbing things of the value 30 bags mm -hmm. and getting the, their thing chopped. Like. And I'm like, you're saying one song, this one song, I can release other songs and I'm good, but this mm -hmm. one song is 60 bags. So from there, my whole perspective changed and I'm like, no, know your worth. Like. And if you feel, if the labels ain't trying to give you your money's worth and you think that's not fair, work, mm -hmm. keep working. And what that's what Ads is doing, I guess, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He's working himself and he's created what he got for himself now. So it's like, come to me correct and come with some respect kind of back. No, 100%. And <clears throat> I guess that <clears throat> you've come out of prison. <clears throat> so you just come out again recently. Is there a thing now where it's like, oh, I need to be consistent and just stay on this. And because obviously you have to protect yourself for every way because obviously the street stuff. But is there a way now you can take responsibility and say, you know what? I can actually, I need to cut this out now. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we don't want to go into details about why you went back to jail. So, one but it's like, is it how do you look at that now? Because in the same instance, you're thinking, okay, cool. There's still people on road who might try it. 
So I need to feel like I'm safe. Mm. But at the same time, I've got this career that I'm doing with my brother and to give me a better future. So how does that balance work? You know, it's for me, bro. It's this, isn't it? I, the way how, how I looked at it when I was, when I was actually in there, yeah, I was like, rah, man's too big to be doing certain things that man's doing, bro. Like, I, that, like, I wasn't supposed to be doing that. That's the reality, bro. Mm. Like, man's got, I've got family that I take care of. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's lots of things that I have to lose out here, bro. Do you know what I mean? So, I know the streets is the streets and that, but I just feel like, for me, it's more just using my brain a bit more. Like, man, I need to know, at court, if I don't even really feel, if it's a bit booky and I'm not really feeling going there or something like that, like, I'm not going to go, bro. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't need the draw outs, bro. Mm. I'm getting older now, bro. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, like, before I went jail, I weren't thinking like that. I was thinking, nah, bro, I'll be right. If it's techie, I won't have it. Do you get it? But now, my mindset is, bro, if it's techie, I even feel like it's going to be techie. Yeah. I'm not going, bro. And I don't care who has a problem with that. I just won't go. I'll get someone else to go scope it out before. Do you get it? I get there. There's other alternatives yeah. than, you know what I'm saying? No, 100%. I always say, always go with your intuition. If something doesn't feel right, don't do it. And if it's a thing that where you feel, rah, oh, oh, this, this, this is the maddest thing when people say, oh, make sure you bring the thing. I'm like, if we have to go to a party where we feel we have to bring it, why the hell are we going, going there? Going, bro. We don't want to enjoy ourselves. We're looking and, over our shoulder. I'll tell you the realness about even the level we're at. Mm. We get bagged for anything. The arts are laughing at us. Mm. The net is laughing at us. The fans. All the only comments you're going to see on Shade Borough UK Gossip is why was they doing that anyway? Why, 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 why? People why? don't know us. A lot of our fans know us via music. Mm. They know us as musicians. They know us as successful musicians. So all that previous stuff, they don't give a... They don't care about it. Mm. They're like, why? Forget all of that. This is what we know and respect you for. But us in our heads, we've got so much going on, we don't even respect ourselves in that level. Like, rah, like, this is what... So my whole thing is... Why I said it's still the conflict about are you in the ends or are you not? A hundred percent. If you're in the ends and you stay in the end, you're going to jail. Mm. It's either, obviously where they say it's the two extremes, isn't it? Jail with the other one. And I'm, the other one's not in, not in my books. No, God's plan is God's plan, but it's, I'm doing what I have to do. But it's mm. like, if I wasn't in that environment, that is, it's admitted now. Yeah. Why is Joe don't, I'm a, I'm, we have a legit, a legit company. Mm. Why, is, why can't we not be legit? What well, isn't the aim to get out, get money and move your family and get your family out of problems? Mm. So how are, you, how are you going to be respected for doing this and doing that and your family's still suffering? Mm. What do people respect money? I'll be real, look, you could do the slimiest thing, yeah? I don't know, not even slime, but like something neaky. Mm. You could do something that people don't rate, something neaky, boom, boom, boom. If you got bare papers, that's your comeback. Mm. Any scenario, yeah. your comeback is, I've got papers. I can, I can feed my family, I can do this. The bro, open your fridge. Mm. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like, so what do people actually respect? Well, people are doing everything, all of this for money. Mm. A lot of these problems start from money, but people think it's nice, badness. People don't receive what type of badness are you talking about? Bro? Mm. If you've got papers, if you can provide, then you know, that's what people respect. Bro. That's, yeah. what no, that's the main thing. So what's, what's, what's on the plan ahead, man? What's going on? What's, what's new? I've got a tape loading, mm. so independent tape. When I say independent, I mean solo. Obviously, Broski's on the tape as well. But yeah, like just showcasing my solo talent, do you know what I mean? Because mm. I don't really feel like in, in the Skanged on AM career, I haven't given, well, I've got done like two solos, bro, mm. in how many years, do you know what I mean? I've given them two tracks. AM's got bear out there, do you mm. know what I mean? So it's now time for me to give them just, you look and hear what I'm about now, do you know what I mean? I've got some, like, more personal stuff to me in there, not so much. Oh yeah, it's a scandal on AM track. It's stuff that matters to me in that in those um some of those tracks mm. in there. I've tried to give a different sound. Um, yeah, I think everyone will like it. You know, everyone's been on. Oh yeah, scandal's improved. When's that, it yeah. out? When's it out? I haven't got a date, bro. It's been bro. I've had this tape for like a year, bro. Mm. I've had it for it's probably even more. But what I keep doing is. Because the times keep on changing and the sound changes, I'll go back and change songs. Mm. I know there's some songs on there that I'm, I won't change because they're strong. Yeah. But there's some that I've just taken out, replacing them, just updating it with what's going on like currently. So even now, I've got some songs in there relating to obviously my time in prison. Do you know what <coughs> I mean? So people, can, there's, it's all around, bro. People can relate. Do you know what I mean? I feel like people relate to that tape a lot. Is there, is there anyone else who can expect on that? Bro, I'll be real. 
You're going to have to wait and see, bro. <laughs> Word, Yo, what was it called? I'm the bigger picture. The bigger picture. Which makes sense. And yourself? Yeah, I reckon so. While Skeng's got that going on, I've got some solo stuff going on. But the main, the main thing about that is just to make people... There's people that's going to like things about Skeng um, and not like things about me, or vice mm. versa, you know what I mean? Mm. So let's enhance that. Let's get our, um, our flowers individually. Mm. Let's make sure that we're catering for everything that we can separately. So that when we come back together, it's bringing new flavors, it's bringing new things, bringing new ideas. You know what I mean? And when you like like to come back together later on, we've been, we've been we've got working. something we record together. It's just about what do you see, what do the fans yeah. see, what okay. goes on YouTube. So that's what we're kind of um, because now now when we go beef, it's whole different flavors. Again, got all bear shit going on. I got other shit going on. So the ideas and that it's all different. We're going yeah. there, we're hitting different beats, we're doing all of this stuff. So. For me personally, that's what's going on. It's getting good. I've got a couple um, singles coming out, um, things like that. But it's, it's looking, it's looking good still. Because from there, it's like sh- next year, we're trying to have all this. Whenever this interview comes out, anyway, trying to have a, a, a nice, a nice, healthy run. No police trouble, mm. none of that. It's gonna be brazy musically. Twenty twenty two is gonna be brazy for Scandal on AM. And what about in terms of just the sound? Do you guys ever sort of go into the rap, real rap? Yeah, I, I, I think I dabble in that a lot yeah. of, of recent. Yeah. I've started to... Because before Drill, like, it was those sort of beat. Like, people, did, obviously, it was a real rap thing, innit? Yeah. So, that's just naturally what I was attracted to, do you know what I mean? But obviously, Drill is what we... The genre that we decided to, mm. to go into. I don't really feel like it was like we even knew we was doing Drill at the time. It was just mm. like... These are the beats we're using. This is what we're talking about. And we've people, we didn't say this is drill. Yeah. People said that's drill. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's, for me, it's just like, we're just going to be doing mad things, bro. Next year, I'm telling you, the sounds are different, bro. Like, it's not typical. Oh, yeah, this, this is what we expected from them. It's craziness, bro. We've worked. We've had a quiet little year. Both he's been releasing this year. I've had a quiet year, should I say. But next year, it's all gas, no brakes, bro. Yeah, say no more and that there was a big ego interview 